Welcome back, y'all. Thank you for subscribing. Or not subscribing. Maybe you snuck in. We have an awesome... <laughs> okay with that, too. <laughs> we have an awesome episode for you. I'm Gerald David. I'm Kitty. And this is Two Aprons. Today, we're doing... We are doing cheesy chicken enchiladas. Her mother's recipe. Yes, passed down in the family. So, if you're like us, doing what we do, your food comes in a box like this. Remember this? The yummy box of awesomeness. This is what we've got this week. This is, of course, the cheese. That's a key ingredient to the cheesy so enchiladas. Cheese. It's very pretty. Don't forget, more cheese. This is fancy tiny cheese. You that know is, it's fancy. That is cheese, not butter, just because that could be really confusing via <laughs> uh, image. So we have our cheeses. peppers. We have our peppers. Yum, yum, yum. And these are actually sweet peppers, it looks like. That's awesome. I did not remember that being an ingredient. We have jasmine rice. Jasmine rice. You can't see that it's jasmine, but we believe it when it says it is. Some hot pepper flakes, red pepper flakes. Ooh, red pepper flakes. We've got some sour cream and ghee. Kind of work this one together. I'll give that off to Kitty. Sour cream and ghee are, you know, dairy ingredients there, along with the cheese, to be fair. Then um, we have our spice blend, which, uh, oh, I'll let you display that. Our beautiful spice blend, as you can see. Hold it a little bit close to A little bit dark, a little bit paprika-y. I'm guessing that's an ingredient. It is. It's smoked paprika, garlic powder, ground cumin, and dried Mexican oregano. I don't know really what that means. Um, I... And ancho chili powder. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I like this spice blend um, when it's on things, but it can be a little overwhelming for me. Mostly because I'm not a huge fan of cumin. Um, it's a very strong flavor. If you like it, that's awesome. Uh, to me, it tastes extremely earthy. And, so, yeah, earthy. So I use the, the, the spice blend in a little bit, um, a little bit more sparingly than some of the others. We have this deliciousness, the chili pepper sauce. This is a guajillo chili pepper sauce. Um, guajillo... Chili peppers are actually the second most commonly used peppers in Mexican cuisine uh, behind poblanos. So, little tidbit of information there. I like that. I like that. Next, we have the tortillas. And it looks also so like, uh, and then off to Kitty. Tortillas and some scallions there. And I'm betting that those don't stay whole long. I bet not. <laughs> this is all the deliciousness from your mother's recipe. Mm. Mommy, dearest. So the so first thing is uh, cook the rice. So of course they, you know, they're gonna tell you remove the ghee. You're gonna kind of massage this just so they can start warming up and be malleable. How much water is needed for the rice? Um, I don't know. So I'm just gonna read like what this says because yeah. I don't, I don't know the recipe. This is your mother's recipe. Oh, the, uh, sure. But it pretty much it doesn't have that, that yet. It's, it's, I was going in the order of the thing. So we yep. got to the glue, the glee, a uh, ghee. How do you say this? What is this? It's, what? It's, I don't understand. Okay. Blue ghee, 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 go hot. What, what, what is that? It's pronounced ghee. It's from, uh, it originated in Southeast Asia and is actually a class of clarified butter. Clarified butter is just when you take regular butter and you melt it. Um, eventually, the liquid fats and the milk solids separate. You remove the milk solids and what you're left with is ghee. So ghee actually has less lactose than um, normal butter. So there you go. It also tends to be a little more expensive. So just food for thought as you're looking at possibly switching. The recipe, the Magic Mother's recipe, says preheat the oven at 450. It looks like we'll need one cup of water. Yes, thank you. Um, with the rice and the spice blend and a big pinch of salt. It really highlights the big pinch of salt. This is not ADA approved. I want to say that this is the first time we've ever put a spice blend into water mm -hmm. and like right no we may have done it like two other times but it's not often that they have to put the spice blend actually in with the mm -hmm. rice. I like it. So we've got our spice blend in there we've got our rice and what was the other component? The a ghee. big pinch of salt. No, not the ghee. Oh, not the ghee. Just they just have you. A big pinch of salt. They just want you to take this out because if you kind of uh 
procrastinate, this can be really hard to work with. But all you do is take it out when you start everything, and you just kind of do this, and it'll be fine. So it's the same as the honey in these recipes. You always want to remove it from the refrigerator and then just kind of knead it to help it, um, you know, get a little bit more liquid. And you did the pinch of salt? I did the, the giant non-ADA approved pinch of salt. And we'll take the um, boiling on high. Okay. We've got it on high. Ooh, I can smell that spice. And then once it's there. boiling, we'll reduce that heat and we'll cook it for 12 to 14 minutes. Um, while that's doing this thing, we're gonna prep some of these ingredients. Get ready. This cheese is already kind of kind of ready. And I'm giving myself a little bit of workspace. Alright, what are you doing with the cheese? I know we don't have a. Uh, but we have. We don't have a. Sorry. A sh yeah, okay, a shredder grater. Yeah. <laughs> no, we don't. We have really good knives. We do. So, and I'm very excited about them because I actually got them for him um, as a Christmas present. And so I'm very excited that we have knives where we can cut the cheese to basically. Uh, <laughs> yes, I forgot. I'm cooking with a boy. Um, uh, man. And basically, we cut the cheese uh, finely enough that. It is the same as grating it or equivalent, so it's not a big deal. We barely even know how to do this. That was a long way to get there, but I really like these knives, okay? <laughs> they are awesome. They are awesome. I just cut it really small. And then it's just like you grated it, except you didn't grate it. And it's funny how we buy all these little things that pretty much all do specialized tasks. Yes, if you watched our last show, I went on a little bit of a tangent about that potentially. Um, so, yeah, sometimes I like items that have more than one specific use. Well, this is coming out good. This is coming mm -hmm. out good. This is fine knife skills. Mm -hmm. And so this little block of cheese is actually making quite a bit. I did not really think that was going to happen. That's I was looking at it. I'm thinking like, we're going to need more cheese, please. That is the magic of mom's cheesy chicken enchiladas. I see me doing most of the stuff and you just sitting there. What would you like for me to do? I can knead the ghee. No, I just wanted like, to give I'm you gonna, a minor I'm guilt trip. I just wanted to give you a minor guilt trip. Okay. I didn't actually want to achieve anything. All right, I can tell you fun facts about the um, Scoville scale. What is that? So the Scoville scale, <laughs> the Scoville scale is a rating of measurement for chili peppers. The Guajillo pepper falls at about the um, 25 to 500 on the Scoville scale, which is a medium heat. Um, for comparison, a jalapeno is like 2,500 to 8,000 Scoville heat units, and what those judge is actually the heat or spiciness of the um, chili pepper. And that's actually a quantifiable thing. It's not, oh, this one's hotter than the other one. No, it is. I think is. she made all this up. <laughs> Scoville was our old golf coach. I've never, I've never played golf with a coach. Um, however, the Scoville heat unit is quantifiable, and it's measured by the concentration of capsaicinoids in a chili pepper. Capsaicinoids, um, capsaicin is the predominant one, which you've probably heard of. That's what like makes your eyes water when you're cutting things that contain capsaicins and it's what gives chili peppers their heat. Mm -hmm. So um, just another fun fact I learned in researching guajillo peppers, the hottest pepper in currently in 2020 as awarded by the Guinness Book of World Records is the Carolina Reaper. Ooh, that's like, scary. <laughs> and it has a stinger tail. Scary. It looks scary too. Like you would not just naturally be like, I wanna eat that. No, it looks like it would sting you and you know possibly kill you. Like I said, a jalapeno on the Scoville unit, so Scoville Ooh. scale, is uh, twenty five hundred to eight thousand. A Carolina reduce this Reaper. Heat Ooh, at this do. time, I hate to interrupt, but this no, is not at all. Thing. That reduces heat and set that timer for twelve minutes. We do forget boiling water a lot. How many of you were like yelling at the screen, like get the rice? <laughs> I feel like that might have been happening. I thought this was your mother's recipe. Hey, I did not cook a lot with my mom, so <laughs> I don't know how much that counts. <laughs> now we're gonna do the peppers according to this. 
So the last thing I was going to tell you about the Scoville scale and chili peppers is um, the Carolina Reaper, for reference again, a jalapeno is 2,500 to 8,000 Scoville units. A Carolina Reaper is 2.2 million Scoville units, um, Scoville heat units. So just to give you an idea, bars today are running right again, the Guajillo. She was talking about the Scoville, her fake cousin that made up some fancy ruler for heat, like, pfft. But that's no Kelvin dead heats, right? Y'all leave it in the comments and tell me how wrong I is or how right I am. It did say take the stems off the peppers. We have this about ready. Um, then it says to remove the cores. Those are also called ribs. Like if it ever says like remove the ribs and seeds of the pepper, it's those little white pieces. Typically, if you cut the pepper lengthwise, it's super easy to just pull those out mm -hmm. and then clear the seeds out into the trash can. It makes it super, super easy to do. Well, it does say how lengthwise. You were correct. You might not know your mama's recipe after all. Maybe a little. I kind of thought she stole this from the maid. So, can you tell us a, uh, tell us a story <coughs> about peppers or... Please speak. We don't have any fiddle right here, so I just need someone to say ben, something. I'm just kidding. You know, what do you think, Kitty? Tell us something. What was the hottest pepper you've ever had? Uh, I actually don't know. I'm sure it was probably some sort of jalapeno. Me and jalapenos have had a little bit of a love hate relationship over the years. I have a friend at work who will not eat anything with jalapenos in it because they have such a hate hate relationship. But I really like like some spicier foods. Um, however, I do not see the sake of just like burning out my mouth to say that I ate something. So I don't do all the like super spicy stuff that just makes you cry and like, you know, secrete things from every orifice because it's so hot. That to me is not fun. Um, so probably something with a jalapeno in it. What about you, David? What's your spiciest food? I think I've actually had one of those uh, ghost peppers, but I don't know. People talk all types of stuff and so I'm not really sure. It was on some buffet at some show somewhere. The, um, Do you remember, was it like a Vegas buffet? Because that's like kind of an interesting ingredient. No, I don't remember really where we were. Uh, the hottest pepper I've ever seen, though, was like a random pepper. I don't know if y'all know this, but a restaurant can't guarantee a spicy level, spiciness level of any pepper. Um, it's kind of random. You'll get a really hot pepper that is a dud, and you'll get like a normal pepper that will light you up. I was at a restaurant in San Diego once. And the girl that was with us, she took one bite in her thing and started immediately crying. Like, it was horrible. Um, I thought she was going to have to go to the hospital. They brought out some milk, and the guy explained all that to us. And they kind of got it under control. Um, but I like telling that story because I didn't know that. I didn't know they couldn't guarantee. I thought once you knew what kind of pepper it was, you kind of had, like, some type of way to determine that. And you can't really. They can't. They're just kind of guessing. Everything's a guess. It's funny how much you think people have figured out when you really dig in. It's like, no, they're just, they're just guessing. You're like right 90% of the time, which ain't bad, I guess. I think that's vastly overestimating, but okay. All right, so we've half the peppers lengthwise. We've removed the, the ribs and the seeds. And next we're then, going to... Thinly slice. Thinly slice crosswise. Might be time to sharpen the knife. Yeah, I was telling you earlier we need a um, a bench scraper, I think is what it's called. But it's like basically like it's, it's got a rounded handle on it and it's a little dull blade. And you just scrape things with it so that you're not using the edge of your knife when you're pushing things off mm. like that or whatever. You just use this bench scraper mm. and it scrapes it right through. So send us your favorite one and we'll try them out on the show. I still need to sharpen my knife though. That's still valid. That, 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 yeah. I don't know about adding a bench scraper. That sounds weird. That doesn't sound like something I want to use on food. That sounds like something you give to like a seven year old when he's in detention to get gum off of a desk. You don't want to use a bench scraper on your mama's enchiladas. I mean, if that means I have to sharpen my knife less, I might. And you still gotta sharpen your knife. I kind of neglected it. I should have sharpened it. We'll have to do that. This isn't horrible, but it's definitely at that point. Yeah, you should have seen the knives we were working with before. That would let you oh, understand those are horrible. why. No, <laughs> Even these though just... this one's not sharp, it's still better than that. No, this one, it usually cuts through it like butter. And still, it's still not bad. But, um, all right. What's next? Then we slice the scallions, separating the white bottoms from the... Can I do those? 
Greens, you can. Yeah. But to her point, yeah, I can use the other side of that. It hadn't really dawned on me to the, just this moment as she said that, even though I'm pretty sure you've kind of taught me that in the past. I have. So separating the greens from the whites. Oh, that's our timer. Turn that eye off. Move that a little. Stop that timer. Oh, yeah, I'll toss these bottoms. Toss your bottoms. This sounds dirty. Like, I'm pretty sure no matter how you do it. Sometimes you just have to have a good tossed bottom. Mm, I'm not going to comment on that. Can you toss that for me? Well, is this not good? Can you toss the bottom, bottom for me? So I'm gonna read ahead while she's doing that. Oh, that's what it is. We gotta grate the cheese. Oh, yes, that's what I told us to do this. Ooh, I'll prep that. Get ready to prep the chicken. Remember, guys, I typically do that with a plate and some paper towels. I just kind of prep before I even pull it out. you're like watching me do this very intensely um it can be very cathartic and stress relieving so you know if you want to work on those knife skills just chop some things it does look highly yummy. recommend it and it does tell us to separate the white um, bottoms of the scallions from the leafy tops so we're gonna go ahead and get but don't get too weird with it it don't really matter it really, it's one of those things I always thought that was weird scallions are always good like, what so, does that what no difference worries. does that make can you like taste the difference yes Absolutely. There's definitely a texture difference. I don't know if there's a taste difference. Mm -hmm. um, so now, it's the chicken time, you know. Chicken uh, time. So I'm going to you know, pat it dry. I'm going to season it with some salt and pepper. We're going to add the ghee to the uh, pan. I'll put it on medium high till it's melted. We can go ahead and do that first. Okay. Because then it will be happening while we... And I don't know if this helps or not, but I, I'm just in the habit, so I do it. I always shake these down a little bit mm -hmm. just to get it to settle um, before we open it. And that is pretty soft now, so I don't think we'll have any issue with that. Yep, still got to cut it. Oh, didn't, get it. didn't quite get it. That's okay. It's why we have scissors. Mm -hmm. It didn't go. It's right here. Oh, I was like, did you lost that? So it's supposed to put in half of it. And you're going to have some extra left over. Yeah, and again, this is literally from what we read of clarified butter, liquid fats. So, liquid you know, fat. use it a little bit sparingly. No, not sparingly. Yummy. Make sure your partner uses it sparingly if you care about them. Okay. So while that heats up, we can go back to the chicken. The chicken. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. Awesome. I forgot we got another vegetarian meal this time as well. We usually get one, um, typically one vegetarian meal per three that we receive. Me. It's not punishing him. It's just because I like vegetarian stuff. Some of it does taste really tasty, though. We'll give it that. Some of it's really, really good. I was a pescatarian for like 20 years. So it just, it it takes me a minute to try other proteins. However, um, the meal kit that we picked does source their proteins really well. And that's one of the things that, um, I still don't eat red meat, but I will eat chicken occasionally because it's all like vegetarian fed, antibiotic free, humanely raised, um, all kinds of things, you know, well sourced uh, that are important to me, like in a protein, so. So at least there's a middle ground. We are on that. Yeah, because he is not eating all vegetarian meals all the time. Like that's just not happening. Or pescatarian, and like I'm not gonna eat red meat. So we found a really good middle ground. Mm. This meat looks really good. I can tell it's high quality. So we have some. Yummy. What he's pulling out here are just some um, chicken pieces, you chicken breast for me? pieces, and that is awesome. You want a pre rinse? Yeah, I can that. Sometimes it's really icky on your hands, so we just pre rinse a little bit. So Well, and I do it to manage the dripping, so I'm not dripping that stuff everywhere. This way, 
and I pat it dry, which I just do with the paper towels. You guys already know this stuff. We went over it in that first episode. So pat dry. It's pretty Hopefully. much the same thing every time. Rinse and repeat mm -hmm. kind of thing with the proteins. So do a little bit of salt. Me and her define a little bit differently, so just you might have to add more. It's going to be yummy. You don't need to add more. You just add a ton of pepper. That's really where your seasoning comes from. Well, I don't and think that's true. I don't rice. think that's true. It's healthier, whether it's true or not. I think we're good on that. And then we need the spice blend. No, the spice blend is in the rice. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So that's it? it just like pepper? A, yeah, salt and pepper. The salt and the ghee? Yeah. So set that timer for three minutes, or I guess maybe four. Um, okay. Yeah, I guess that's probably hot enough, isn't it? I would think so. Yes, it is. And that's that sizzle she was talking about that other episode while I was a little impatient. You don't have to wait for it, but man, it is satisfactory when you put that tender piece of meat in there and hear that pop sizzle. And when you hear that sizzle, you know that your pan was up to temperature, or like you actually waited for it to heat up to um, the temperature that you had it on the oven or close to. Which I don't know if that's super important, but maybe. But if it doesn't sizzle like that when you put it in the pan, make sure to cook it a little bit longer because that means your pan is not cooking at the heat that it's meant yeah, to. Yeah, make sure it's on its way up. Will you grab this again? Yes. I got this is me not touching stuff. We're managing our cross contamination. Now I can wash my hands and be clean again. Important to wash your hands. I know you guys hear that 40 times a day. So I'm just going to add to it. You wash your hands. Uh, now, a situation is like this. I don't know if I'm doing it the full 20 seconds. I guess I do have a timer right there. I could get all ER, George Clooney with it. Also, make sure um, that your chicken is in an even layer uh, because you're going to cook it like that for three or four minutes without stirring. And if it's not, you're going to have some pieces that are burned and some pieces that are still raw. And yep. It's not going to be super awesome. We're just cleaning as we go. You guys know we're big proponents of that. Like, no huge pile of dishes at the end. Easy, Gerald Davis has been kind enough to uh, clean the protein dishes since his hands were dirty anyway. Well, I wash my hands and then I just handle the dishes, so I'm not just spreading the oh, yeah, contamination. Yeah. No, he definitely washed his hands first. I can vouch. Um, well, they, they washed me out. They, they needed to vouch, but you know, <laughs> I do appreciate it, I guess. They saw your back. I was just letting them know what they thought was I guess happening that's true. was happening. I guess that's true. <laughs> All right, so that goes for a so, little bit. Yeah, we're waiting on those for three or four minutes. Um, and then we'll add the sliced peppers and the white bottoms of the scallions that we sliced up. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. and here it says go ahead and add some uh, hot pepper flakes. We're going to sprinkle those in lightly. Yep. Because we love spicy. So if you don't, like you can omit the hot pepper flakes from my mother's recipe. Uh, mm. But if you Yum love me. it, go for it. Yummy. Then let me just read ahead a little bit so I know what's coming up. All right, this looks simple. I think I think we got this. I understand. Yeah, I think so. Mm, so we're going to add the peppers next. Peppers and the white bottoms of the scallions, yes. Oh, yummy. That's going to be delicious. Oh, sliced white, the sliced white bottoms of the scallions. They are very definitive. They care very much where you put your white bottom. That's very, very weird. I think that's weird. I think that's weird. I thought in 2020 we were beyond that. Uh, ooh, it does say season with more salt and pepper. I'm always looking for a reason to season with salt and pepper. Yeah, I'm pretty sure mm. that says if desired. Um, so, like, maybe we have to fire that. I think we do. We did, we did I a think lot. I think we do. Absolutely. And it said there's going to be ghee left over, but there's probably not. No, there there should be ghee left over. No, Seriously, no. it's just liquid fats. Like, no, it's yummy. It's the nectar of the gods. It's yeah. delicious. It's the best. <laughs> what do these taste like? Are these delicious? Have you tried Sweet one? peppers? No, I haven't tried any yet. One of the best part about cooking is the grazing. Just eating as you go. And fresh mm. vegetables are so freaking good. They are. Hey, man, these are... That's really... I didn't know what I was in for. I'm also starting to get hungry. One of our snacks that we love mm. also is like these sweet red peppers dipped in hummus. So you start us eating these raw and we're like, where's the hummus and let's go? <laughs> That's right. That's right. I like that. I like that. I'm going to peek in here. Ooh, oh, the and there's our timer. So now we're going to add in the peppers. 
Gonna add in the peppers and the, the white sliced bottoms. white bottoms. And then we're gonna cook for three to four more minutes. I'm set that and timer. Of course, that's gonna be four. Cause you know how we are about proteins. Like we are. We're always a little bit over rather than a little bit under. That's back on the heat, so we'll hit the timer there. Oh, that's so pretty. Yeah, so I'll give you guys a little yeah. sneak peek. Obviously, the chicken's not done yet, but a little But budgia. a lot of color in there. That's what we love in dishes is just, you know, some good color. You want your dishes to have vibrant colors. It's how you know you're kind of like getting all of the food groups or, you know, having some diversity on your plate. You want a lot of color on there. That's right. You know what they say. It's your eyes taste it first, your nose tastes it second, and your tongue tastes it last. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. There's a dirty version of that, but we're about to wow. eat. Wow. <laughs> I, yeah. I know. See, that's me being cultured and reserved. Being dignified. Being dignified. That's very trying, conservative of you. I thought, I thought that was trying, yeah. to be a little, trying to be a little proper. A little proper. <laughs> very fancy. I was going to call Cook's Cocktail. Oh, yeah. We've been quarantining lately, so there's none of that in there currently. It's not. Unfortunately. It's not. I really wish there was. That was my tactic to fill in this dead air time. Instead, we're going to have to just win you over with our smiling personalities. Well, she's going to have to win you over. <laughs> I should probably turn back around and check this chicken. He does have a good butt. Mm. <laughs> so, Kitty? Yes. Please help me fill this dead air. I was working on it, but... Um, Were you working on it? Did I call you out? Did I put you on the spot? A little bit. Thank well, you. Well, I turned that. around. I said she was going to do some, uh, I don't know. I said something clever. You and then I turned around. Then she like just that. kind of objectified you. me and said, stare at my bone. Um, he does which have a cute I appreciate it. He said, when you over. I, I thought he was joking. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of glancing at my notes here, but I think I've covered everything. We don't have notes. On, don't I tell mean, them we're a yeah. bunch of tryhards. <laughs> I am. He's not. Trust me. But uh, I like, no. Too. I look up stuff and <laughs> like whatever. So, um, but I have actually given you all my notes with that whole um, monologue on the Scoville scale earlier. So. And that whole thing you made up with all your notes. <sighs> not all of them, but some. Tell me in the Google if her uncle Scoville invented some heat ruler. You tell me that. You tell me. Yes. Um. Just another mm. um, fun fact, if you're collecting them, the guajillo pepper is a form of dried marisol chili pepper. What is that? What's a guajillo no pepper? No clue. That's what this is. This is our oh, really? guajillo pepper sauce. It is I'm just now learning this. second most used chili pepper in Mexican cuisine behind the poblano, oh. which is all stuff I said at the beginning, but cool. I might have been preoccupied. I may not have been fully aware of the words and or paid it. He was not aware of the words. I was, I was. I was aware of the cheese, though. It was very I remember I was talking about cutting the cheese. Yeah. That was a very inefficient part um, of that beginning We actually episode. need cheese for the cheesy chicken and What kind of cheese is this? And what kind of cheese is that? That is sharp cheddar cheese. That is... It's fancy. I thought this was going to be fancy. That is kind of like... That is not fancy. That's uh, kind of actually Monterey Jack. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Mm, that's yummy. Oh, there we go. Thank God for timers. Hmm. Now I get it. Say by the bell. Mm -hmm. Now I have a purpose. Really, you didn't mm. get that when you were in school and there were bells? Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is that done or do you want to leave it on a little longer? I think it needs another minute or so. Yeah, it looks like it might. So again, like... We always leave our proteins longer rather than have them be a little bit under. Um, so our chicken has been on for approximately eight minutes now. And we're, I've just put two more minutes on the timer um, just to make sure that it's cooked through. We are not fans of food poisoning. It's happened. No, it's better it's to be It's not patient. fun. Exactly. It's never happened with anything I cooked. I will say no, that. No, no, no. We got it from a restaurant. It was great. Um, no, but, but so this is starting to look really, really good. But it is about two minutes away. And you can kind of tell, it should look like something delicious. If it looks a little pasty white, it's not there yet. If it's so pale that you're questioning it, probably just let it go a little bit longer. Yeah, that's pretty much our rule. If I'm questioning it, we're going to let it keep going. Yeah. Ooh, how many tortillas do we got? Four. We should have four. And we have this guy. We're going to use this in the prep. After a little bit. One of my favorite dishes. It's a nummy nummy. And it's be Like, how cool is this for... um. Enchiladas, right? It looks like enchiladas should go in it. it I'm does. pretty sure it it's called an enchilada dish if you go to the store where it's purchased. 
we copied this from one of our favorite shows. <laughs> and we just um, happen to have this dish, so. <laughs> he did, he did. This is yummy. I'm getting so hungry about eating all this. Uh, hunger is the best spice, though, which is why we don't try and do, like, apps or whatever, but at the same time, it's it's a torturous situation. But we also graze, so. Mm. My waistline has been getting slimmer, I will say that. I have stopped my expansion. I'm very proud of that. I was expanding for be. quite a few decades. <laughs> um... I thought that was important to get that under control. She forces me to exercise. Again, torture. I do not torture. force him. The he really does. adorable thing is he thought he was going to hate it in the beginning, and now he's the one who's most ins insistent that we exercise. No, I don't know what she's talking about. I hate it. It's horrible. He loves it. It makes him feel so good. <laughs> it does. It makes both of us feel good, honestly. I'm the one who's always talking about it, but then when it comes down to it, I'm like, I don't, do you really want to? I mean, mm -hmm. we don't have to. And then... I'm gonna put it on, but I'm going to put it on another two minutes because it's still not quite. I think we had it on a little bit too low of heat, um, so we're having to go a little bit longer. Um, it was supposed to be medium high, and with these things, you're always kind of playing with the oven, trying to find out where that really is. It, Even still, I'm still getting it wrong a little bit. The, um, so I'm depending a lot on looks. Mm. And that does look really pale, just so you know what he's basing it off of. Yep. You can kind of tell here. It's getting done, but oh, yeah. just, We're about you know. two more minutes away. So, just be patient with it. No matter how hungry you are, you're not that hungry. Don't yank it off early. Just let it kind of oh do its God, thing. Oh my God, that does smell amazing, though. Mm -hmm. It's starting to do. And wow. I'm going to put the top on it to kind of trap some moisture in there. Um, that way, I'm not drying it out the longer we go. Um, but to follow up on that last thought, um, David is the one who's like, no, we're getting up and we're doing this. Come on, let's go. So, he's very much the follow-through, and I'm very much like the idea. It works out well in our relationship. So, the next thing we're going to end up doing, once those are done, is make the filling. Make the filling. I'm going to get that over to you. Make the filling. Mm -hmm. So, now we're just going to kill more time. It's a lot harder to do without the alcohol. Oh, my God. Oh. You guys know we're so good at it, though. So, like, no worries. I know. <laughs> so excited. I'm getting so excited. I keep thinking like we're missing something though. And then I remember it's my drink. <laughs> That's it. That is what's missing. Because like, you drank it already. <laughs> like have you ever had a dream that you had a child and then you wake up and then you remember like, oh, I don't. <laughs> but for like that 10 seconds you're like, oh, what? Um, no, me. That's There's only happened to me. mild sense of panic and then, you know, relief. That doesn't happen to her because because um, I actually have a child, so when I wake up, I still have a child. <laughs> <laughs> it's different. Then she just dreams about that kid. It's, it's far different impact. Yet another timer. We've set many timers. Mm. Oh, that looks good. All right, so we're going to transfer the cooked chicken and peppers to the pot of cooked rice. <sighs> what do we do with the cheese? It's time for the cheese, isn't it? No, not yet. Oh, David. No, I... Make sure you're stirring that. I mean, I am. I'm stirring it in. No, David, that's wrong. That's no, this not is not right. What? It's because I'm stirring it and you're just standing there. Yes, this is my mother's recipe, so try to keep up. I don't. I don't. I don't. What do we do next? Oh, it's now it's time to add the chili pepper flakes. No, we already did that. What number are we on? I don't know. But we're on number four. Um, all right, so, oh, the next step is to add the cheese. Well, fold in the cheese. Fold in the cheese? First, you add, you know, fold, how do I, I don't know what fold in the cheese. What's that? D David, you just you fold it in. I, don't, I understand what fold it in. I don't, how do you fold it? Do I fold it like a piece of paper? Like, just a broken piece of paper and, like, just drop it in there? Like, what do you mean, fold in the cheese? David, I can't show you everything. What do you mean you can't show me everything? Can you show me one thing? You just, you, you fold it in. You, you take that thing in your hand and you... This is your mother's recipe. I don't know how to fold it in. Like, you fold it in. What? David! David, no! David! 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 David, what does burning smell like? David! Here goes nothing. Uh, look what I found. David, that's your cell phone. No, on the cell phone. Oh, yes. I didn't... I... Did you do that? 
No. <sighs> no. We're never going to learn what folding in the cheese means. You have to fold in the cheese. I, I... That what does that even mean? You just screamed nonsense at me and put me under a lot of duress. It was my mother's recipe. I wish you would try to keep up. Oh, this is, my wrist is literally going to give out from this. Can you help? Thank you. <laughs> the pot is really heavy. I hope you liked our tribute to community theater. That was a little outtake of Shit's Creek, one of our favorite shows that ended recently and made me cry. Shame so on you. Sad. I'm a grown man. Don't make me cry. So sad. I was so sad that it ended. Like, oh my God. I don't know what I'm going to do. So that's, this is our tribute to their chicken enchiladas episode. I was David. She was Mora. That's the fancy. Mm -hmm. I hope you all knew that. There were <laughs> some some clues. The, um, so now we've mastered folding in the cheese. <laughs> Which, honestly, you've seen the episode to fold means to gently fold, you know, gently blend in. It's the simplest of things. It's just a fancy, it. it's cool. bougie word that means just drop that shit in. It only matters if you're dealing with egg whites as far as I know. So it says to put some of the filling along the bottom. Oh, no. First we had oh, sour cream. Oh, we're going to add the sour cream. And olive oil. That's uh, right. No, I don't think we need the olive oil. That was it's always oil. optional. No, we, no? we had the cheese in there. Right. So, you know, we don't need both. Sour cream. But the sour cream for sure. Again, anything cream-based, I'm totally down. So. Ooh. <gasps> it looks so delicious. Does it say salt and pepper or anything? I mean, not as creamy as David and Mora's, but that one was scary creamy, so I'm looking. If desired, so maybe a little pepper. I think there's too much cheese in this. <laughs> you measured the cheese. Did you put too much? David, no, that's not right. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't measure anything. Oh, yeah, well, then that's probably way too much cheese in there. Oh, my. But that looks delicious from a cream-based standpoint. It does. So you're going to use about two cups, and I've got the cup measure out here just so we can kind of... But I need a spoon or something. Here we go. Sure. This is what I need. That's not... I'm just going to kind of eye it to cover the bottom of this. Just kidding. Who needs cup measures when no, you No, yeah, because then I'll have to scoop it out of that, and it's not going to... Like, honestly, cooking and baking, unless you're just really have some sort of spatial no, yeah. recognition no issue much, you yeah. can eye it now if it's like a rising agent in baking or something um yeah make sure you measure that because there can be consequences but most ingredients you can just eye and you're okay so what just... i'm doing oh sorry no go ahead and tell us what you're doing uh, what i'm doing is just dodging the chicken so that way it's just mostly rice because this is just going to form kind of like a bed not that it matters and the rest we're going to uh fold into the enchiladas I mean, I think this, it's just supposed to be two cups of the filling, so you can get chicken in there and stuff. Like, that's I know, but I'm just fine. not. I want the chicken in the thing. You know, which is why I explained it to you and said what you said. I mean, it's my mom's recipe, but whatever, I guess. I think they figured out this is from the internet. <laughs> this is not from... Well, I guess my mother right. has never it is from somebody's mother. Life. I'm sure it is from somebody's mother. But... My mother would be like, what dish is this that I made when? She's not an enchilada baker. She's like a super holiday baker. I love it because on the holidays, oh my gosh, all of the ovens are full, the fridge is full, like everything is like jam packed and we're like having to take stuff out to the garage. It's phenomenal. It is, it is. I think we need maybe a little bit more in there. Just, uh, can you set those out? Yeah. Since I'm seemingly doing everything. Uh, hey. I but provided this is, the this, I don't have enough. This is slightly bigger, so this just has to be. Oh, I gotcha. I don't know. Really bigger. See it otherwise, okay. we're gonna have to fill these. Mm -hmm. mm, what does that say? I can't read. It's too far away. So all it says is divide the remaining filling among the tortillas tightly. Roll up each tortilla around the filling, and then transfer to the baking dish in a single layer, seam side down. Mm -hmm. These two just wash them. Yeah. We'll get a little Absolutely. wash them as we go. Absolutely. See, Slap I wash dishes sometimes too. Oh, yummy. Look at that. The original recipe doesn't have near as much cheese. <laughs> um, this is actually quite awesome. I'm losing a little bit of control. Oh, look at that. Oh, that looks fantastic. I'm 
kind of just going around adding some to it, then I'll add more. I'll go back because I don't really know how much this will spread. I mean, it's a little bit of a guessing game, kind of like life these days. You do your best, but honestly, that's probably not going to be good enough. Oh, there we are. Oh, that looks fantastic. Oh, wow. And like, mm. to be honest, in mm. my book, there's never such thing as too much cheese. I mad respect my vegan friends, though, it's because so like, I cannot do that. I've tried. I'll take over the next set of dishes so she doesn't feel like she got uh, tricked into doing them all. Mm -hmm. Nope, not at all. Always happy to help. What's next on the agenda? All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take these tortillas, I'm gonna roll them tightly, enough that they close. Um, and then I'm gonna place them seam side down into this baking dish. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute when I've got them in there. And like this recipe probably called for like a smaller baking dish initially, but like work with what you got. This is like obviously the perfect baking dish for enchiladas, so we're gonna use it. I think so, and it matched the one on the show. I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. It was very awesome. All right, so we've got these guys in there snug as a bug in a rug, which is probably a horrible analogy when you're cooking, but. <laughs> Uh, that's what the analogy was because we can't think of anything else. So um, what we're going to do now that we've got those in a single layer, seam side down, is evenly top the enchiladas with the guajillo chili sauce and grated cheese. So Ooh, that's a, that's a great. Yeah. And we're going to drizzle that over. And then David, if you could give me a spoon so I can just kind of make this level. One spoon? Yeah. So we're just going to scrape that out a little bit, and then we're going to spread it over the enchiladas evenly, and this is going to help them because we're about to put them in the oven to bake for a minute or uh, for 9 to 11 minutes actually, and so this is just going to help keep them moist while they bake, so we want to make sure we kind of get that spread evenly over the tortillas. And then because these are going in the oven to bake, uh, we're going to put this Monterey Jack cheese on top. And we may have a little of this left over because the inside was so cheesy. I just don't want to like burn out. What's going to be left over? We might have a little bit of cheese left over. Oh, I'm sure that's fine. Yeah, so we have a little bit of cheese left over, but again, we have so much in the filling that like it doesn't need a ton on top. Those still look gorgeous. Beautiful, just in case, um, so you can kind of see there. And then we're going to pop those in the oven for 9 to 11 minutes. I'll set that. Thank you. Usually we would set that for 10 and just kind of check them at that point. Um, and now we just wait on that. Oh, yummy. So that's pretty much the last step, isn't it? Yep, that is the last step before we pull them out of the oven and eat them. So we don't have like 10 minutes of banner. We're oh, gonna take a yeah. little break. We're gonna take a little break. So if you don't mind us, I'm Joe David. And this I'm Kitty. Kitty. Oh, I didn't do that right. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Welcome back, you guys. Um, we took a little bit of a break there because it's open. Oh, the timer's going off. Awesome. Awesome. Let's check on these delicious, delicious guys. Ooh, what? They're not quite ready. If you'll set that for about another minute. Sure. But I am going to take them out for a little bit of a peek. They're super close. Ooh, they're super close. And basically, guys, all you're looking for here, the meat is already cooked. So really, mm -hmm. all you're looking for is for the cheese to be melted and mm -hmm. everything to kind of be warmed through. That is right. Let's do a little bit of cleanup, like we always think about doing. Clean as we go. So do you want to Are these garnish, that? or what are those? No, um, this is just leftover cheese. This is garnish. The well, scallion tops are garnish. The garnish will set off to the side. Okay. And unless you want to save it or something... You know what I mean? So yeah, like, the cheese is, I think that can go. Yeah, we got about that minute, so let's just kind of make this happen. So just clean it up a little bit. And 
know this is kind of important. I know it doesn't make for the best uh, cinema, mm -hmm. but we're kind of trying to maybe just instill a little bit of muscle habits and also not hide the, the grime, the actual work that goes into preparing your meal. Because you know? there is always cleanup, unless you just have like staff, and that's wonderful, but most of us don't. Even then, someone's got to clean it up. You might check in on those kitties? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. These bad boys are good. Where am I setting these, by the way? Wherever. On the oven. Wherever on the oven. Yeah, I just had to get another cloth to bring them out. My wrists are good. not that strong, guys. His are. Mine are not. Yeah. <laughs> they try. I don't know if I said yet for that. <laughs> I guess they probably are. Ooh, that was delicious. Let me clean this guy up a little bit. Mm. How long do they cool for? Or what's the next steps on it? All right, so this is the finished product. Looks remarkably similar to the last shot, but they're just a little more done. She's a little more melted. Woo, behind. Um, one of the things you learn in a kitchen, if you're behind someone who's doing something, always stay behind. That way nobody turns around with a knife and accidentally, you know. That's right, that's right. Pack something they shouldn't. Um, so we're going to let them stand for at least two minutes before we serve them. And oh, then we're going to garnish them with the sliced green tops of the scallions. And that is literally it, guys. Look at these delicious, <laughs> delicious. I'm a, uh, will you get a towel and set yes. that over? Okay. I don't know if this leaves a mark or whatever, but I've learned to just leave a towel. Boom. Oh, look Super at easy guy. to do if you don't have trivets, like just use a dish towel. And it helps too because the oven's hot, so this will cool just slightly faster. Not by super much. And because we've done our pre-clean, our pre-clean, it's hard for me to speak. Oh, I need a sponge. That's what I need. Oh, but she remembered to turn off the oven. Bonus points. <laughs> it Bonus does not points. always happen, let me assure you, but... Oh, so far, it has always happened. No, it has no, always it happened. No, it doesn't always immediately happen. That's the right one. Yeah, yeah. She acts like we, we've forgotten there's an oven no, still no, on no. somewhere. No, no, there's no. not. There's not. It does always eventually happen. I'm just impressed that it happened this quickly for me. So. I, know. I know. While we wait for this to, uh, to cool, again, I even keep forgetting those words, the basic words. You know what I mean? You think you remember these. Just wait for this to cool. Now I just wanted to do a little bit of uh, Schitt's Creek trivia. <laughs> Schitt's Creek trivia. This helped draw people in. They were like, what the hell y'all keep talking about? It's a TV show. If you don't know what it is, just, just ignore us. All right. All right. Um, the first question, and this is from an imaginary audience member, I just I just made up. Thank you, Stan. Um, who is the mayor of Schitt's Creek? Oh, is this for me? Yes! Oh, I'm sorry, Roland Schitt! No, yeah, she's like, just I thought, looking at like, me I like, thought you were going to answer in the comments or we something. Are alone. We are going to come There's back. There's no one else here. I made up Steve. He doesn't exist. <gasps> Stan, and you got his name wrong, but we uh, are. <laughs> now I have to be concerned about Steve's hurt feelings over here. I have enough on my plate, Karen. I don't Karen. know who Steve is, but Stan's feelings are very hurt. The, um, Doug Simpson. So now you ask me one? All right. Who is the character that Johnny Rose cannot get his name right in Bob's Garage? Oh, he I can never get it wrong. His car. No, it's I John McSnickerden it. or Snickerden. No, she even just said it, and I still can't. Doug Simpson. Which Doug Stinson. Is, no, Simpson. It is Stinson. a ridiculous last name. Simpson. Doug Stinson. <laughs> the, um, so that is our timer for the enchiladas to have ooh. cooled. So, so now we, we can go ahead and top those. Yummy. <laughs> and this is as easy as it looks, folks. I like to use. Oh, pretty yeah. much all of it because it's yummy and it's all vegetables. Of it. I'm gonna go ahead and mm -hmm. show you guys. It just adds some really pretty color to the dish. So now we've got those beautiful green scallion tops on there, and we are ready to have dinner. It is. I'm very excited. It smells phenomenal. Phenomenal. It does. Phenomenal. Ooh. We're gonna cut into it so you guys can see it. Ooh, look at that. Hmm. It'd probably be easier to do them two at a time. I don't know. How would I know that? But, uh, I guess I could try it at two at a time, but I'm not going to eat two of these. But, but look how big that is. Look at they that. They are. Like, that is like, a not, lot So I'm just going to do one at a time. But she is right, like, probably or something. I don't know. I didn't put that kind of thought into it. Oh, this is what you won for all your love and dedication. Mother's Recipe Cheesy Chicken Enchiladas. I'm Gerald David. And I'm Kitty. And this is Two Aprons.
delicious. <laughs>